What up, though? Oh, wait a minute. I mean, may pips be upon you. <laughs> hey, I hope you had a great weekend. Tell you what, we're going to take a look at the calendar for this upcoming week. Got some important events coming up. Not so much on Monday, but on Tuesday, you'll see that uh, Pound has unemployment numbers that'll be coming in. Uh, uh, that's going to move. That's definitely going to move price. Uh, we got retail sales with USD euros looking at the GDP. And uh, uh, we have New Zealand dollar. That that interest rate is definitely going to move that currency. Okay, so you want to be careful of things around Tuesday and Wednesday because Aussie has uh, unemployment numbers coming in as well. USD has FOMC minutes. Okay, uh, and not to mention the pound is having uh, uh, both the pound and the CAD uh, having price movers with a, a consumer price index. Okay. So be careful around the mid middle of the week because uh, uh, things are definitely going to probably uh, switch around for us. Let's look at the Dixie real quick. All right. Starting off with the Dixie, you can see how price impulsed and then uh, had this complex correction here forming an ascending uh, channel. We broke to the downside, broke down to the downside, and then came back up retesting what was support, the support line of this ascending channel. And now turn resistance. We made equal highs here in this uh, this uh, weekly supply zone, okay? And price did fall from here. What do I expect this week with the Dixie, uh, with the USD? I expect the USD to gain strength. Yeah, we did fall off uh, uh, last week, but I think we're going to rebound this week. Um, just keep your eyes on the news, okay? And what I'm looking for is price to find exhaustion. All right, the impulse to find exhaustion here. All right, if we look at the four hour, you can see that we're incoming into that 200 uh, EMA, 250, 20. All right, and uh, if price gets down that far, and I'm not sure it will, uh, I'm thinking price will start to show exhaustion signs as it is right now and uh, turn around. All right, and we should see a bullish dollar for the week. All right. I don't think this is just going to be a pullback and then we're going to come back up. I think actually we're going to be uh, correcting this move. And you can see that there's a lot of missing price, what they call uh, a, fair, a fair value gap or uh, uh, imbalance here. And price will fill that in at some point. It might do it immediately. We'll see. But we also have a... Uh, um, uh, another reason to for price to bounce here, and there is a demand zone forming that that has already formed here. So if price does make it down this far, uh, we can see price do a little bouncy bounce there. All right, and uh, I'd like to see that myself because uh, uh, I'm playing the pairs that are paired up with the USD. I'm playing the pairs to the USD strength. All right, let's go to the next one. All right, that'll be gold. Gold, if you're looking at the, um, uh, the EMAs, you can see that they're kind of not coming out of a knot. And I don't like trading in those in, 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 during that time because uh, there's no trend, all right? But you can see we're starting to get space in between the 50, the, the 20 to 250 and the 20. So that's good. And we're below all of those prices. So we can start to look on the four hour for a more detailed uh, sight, you know, vision of a, a view of a price action. All right. Now you see, we had this flash crash here uh, a couple of Fridays, a couple of Fridays ago, right? And then price spent the week uh, kind of climbing back up. All right, this was an NFP thing here, and uh, price spent uh, the week climbing back up. Now, are we going to continue to go up? That is the question. Well, if I expect USD strength, I'm expecting price to find exhaustion right around this area here. All right, and start to round off and then roll over. That's what I'm expecting. All right, now let's let's just look at the. Uh, uh, the RSI, the RSI says that we are overbought and that we're due for some downside action, some bearish action. So uh, 
that you know i always use the the uh emas and the indicators for secondary confirmation but for the purposes of this this uh weekly forecast webinar i just want to establish a bias all right and in accordance with that uh on the rsi on the daily we're kind of like in the middle all right i'm looking for price to possibly uh get around this uh 20 on the daily and then come back around then start to uh, uh round off okay so we have a very uh influential uh, uh level up here 1800 all right that's a bank level a psychological level you can see i have this zone here of rejection see how price fell away from the zone here and then uh popped up from here on the other side of it well this is a powerful zone if price does make it up here i expect price to find exhaustion and then start to roll over but i'm hoping that it starts to do it sooner than this here at the 20 all right so that's what i'm expecting with uh gold let's uh can just stop that. Uh, let's move on to the next one. That'll be Euro USD. Okay. If I can just uh, close the door on that. All right. On the daily, what do we have with the EMAs? We have the 20, the 200, the 50, the 20. And we, we're, we're below, prices below these. So we can look on the uh, four hour for a detailed look at the uh, price action. Well, what, what, what we want to notice is that we did make equal lows here and price did bounce and found, find itself in a, 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 a impulse and bullishly uh, last week, right? So do we expect more Euro, D, Euro the USD strength? Do we expect this to follow through uh, next week? No, not really. Let's look at the four hour. What do I expect? See, here's the deal. Where are we? We're below the 200. The two that automatically means, all right. If you're using uh, these indicators, that all that automatically means that we should be thinking bearishly. We should be thinking of taking sells, not buys, while we're below the 200. All right. If we're above, then we're looking for buys. All right. And we are poking above the 50. So we're kind of like in the middle here. All right. And uh, we could use some uh, uh, more a more nuanced uh, analysis. If we look at the uh, EM, uh, the uh, RSI, this is not RSI, this is stochastics, I'm sorry. This is stochastics. If we look at the stochastics, it's saying that we are already in the overbought territory. All right? We should be looking for price to show exhaustion, which is showing right now, all right? Which is showing already, given the, these signs here, uh, where we start seeing rejection. And then maybe we can see price uh, roll over eventually uh, as it shows more exhaustion. All right. Do you think, do I think it's going to come all the way up here and then uh, find exhaustion to the 200? No, I don't. All right. But if it, it, it can happen, here's the deal. When you're looking at price action, sorry, when you're looking at price action, what you want to see is areas that can possibly turn price, right? And this is what I'm going to map out to you. Why is it still green? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Uh, as long as price in this structure is below this, this lower high, all right, as long as it doesn't break this structure, we are still maintaining bearish momentum. We broke these lows here, that structure. And as long as we break lows, and that's the last thing we've done. We haven't broken any highs since, all right? We are continuing a bearish trend, all right? Or at least bearish momentum. So uh, until we break these highs, I'm still looking for sales, all right? Even though we're pushing to, uh, to the upside, all right? So what I'm looking for is price to start showing exhaustion here and then rounding over, rounding, rounding. Can, can I just write here, rounding over and then coming down, all right? Because I expect USD to gain strength and uh, pull the Euro down some. If, you look at the, if you're looking at the grand picture of it, the, the macro view, you can see, oh my goodness, you can see that we made a lower high here, 
right? All right, and we made equal lows here. All right, uh, so I'm, what am I expecting? A little pullback, maybe a test of the 200, maybe a test of the 200, and then a continuation to the downside. We're below the 200, so we shouldn't be looking for buys. Next, pound USD, pound USD. Look at the daily. Got a nice swing to the upside. All right, and then uh, price has found another equal high to make. All right, we got a double top going on inside of this weekly supply zone. All right, price re res respected that supply zone and fell, fell to the downside. We broke structure here, making a new low. But curiously enough, we broke structure to the high side. We broke this, we broke these highs. All right, so am I still looking for lows? Am I still looking for uh, sells? No, because we are above what? The 200. We are above the 200. We should be looking for buys, all right? We surged past these highs, so I'm looking for a price to make a correction, which it's done, which it is doing right now. If we look on the four hour, we can get a better view of this, all right? We can see it's surged past these highs here, broke that high, came down with this, this, uh, this correction, and we have found a demand zone, a two, hour, a two hour demand zone, and price is respecting that demand zone and surge to the upside. Now, I called a very, very good trade uh, last week for uh, the pound USD and uh, got, in, got in pretty fairly low at, once it hit this, uh, uh, this demand zone and took it to the high side took it up to the 200. Beautiful trade, beautiful trade. That's in the past now, let's, let's move on, okay? Uh, price has found a supply zone. If we break this supply, if we break this supply, that uh, uh, invalidates my analysis, all right? But as long as we are below it, I am looking for sales. I'm looking for sales, all right? Once we break this though, once we break this uh, supplies, this uh, the supply zone here, then I'll, then buys would be in be in order, okay? And I I'm expecting more more strength to come to the USD, so I'm hoping that uh, price will, uh, you know, in in accordance with my my analysis, will drag drag this back down and we make a new low or whatever, and we'll see what happens. But I am I am cognizant of this high that we made here. We came down, came back up, and then made this complex correction. You know, th this is a, this is, you know, it makes you think that are we going to continue up or down? If we just go by uh, RSIs and stuff, we're in the middle of things and we, it looks like price is on its way up and we're about to hit that oversold zone, overbought zone. And, and, co and come down, that would be a, in accordance with my analysis. But if we look at the daily, the daily says we should be on our way down, okay? So that is in accordance with uh, what I'm thinking. So we'll see what happens next week, right? Next, pound yen. Okay, pound yen, if we look on the daily, we're, we're above the 200 and the, the 50 and the 20 are knotted up, all right? That means we can only look on the daily right now for uh, uh, entries and all. But what we want to notice is we made lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, and then we came back up here, right? Did we break this high? Not quite. We made equal highs, near equal highs, relatively relative equal highs, right? Then we made this low here. That's very interesting, right? I think that's uh, more interesting than a little bit. See what I'm saying? And if we come down here, test this without breaking this low, we can continue. We could continue higher because I am actually looking for strength to come to the yen this week. So uh, that's something to, to, to bear in mind. The, the structure of it, all right? This inverted head and shoulders was made. And then uh, we hit that net line and then we're coming down here. So. Uh, first of all, let's take a look. Uh, we're over overboard again, and uh, looks 
the stochastic says we're, we're looking to uh, come down uh, from this uh, from these levels. But let's look at the four hour to get a more detailed look, right? So we have the EMAs knotted, which means there's no trend, all right? We've made the double top, all right? We've found this supply. What I want you to put, what I want to point out is we made this high, a higher high, and then a lower high. This is a head and shoulders, all right? And what we do, we broke these lows on the way down, all right? That's something that we have to acknowledge, all right? We have to make note of, all right? What is stopping price now? What could possibly turn price around? I don't know how that got on here. I don't know what this is. What is that? I don't want it here, okay? <laughs> what was that about? All right, so uh, what, are we, what are we looking like on the RSI? Uh, the uh, stochastic says uh, we are oversold and uh, we should be do a bounce, but are we supposed to be looking on that? Let me see. Uh, no, no, we're not. So we don't look at, we don't look, we don't acknowledge the, what the read is. It's not helpful on st for stochastics on the uh, four hour this time around because the, these EMAs are knotted up. All right, we have a supply zone here. All right, with this bullish and gold for here, we could, we could look at this and then refine it and see what could turn price around. If we see price start to uh, uh, find exhaustion, which it's doing right now, and start to round off, we can see pr uh, price come out on the other end. Bear in mind, we are forming another bearish order block, all right? And price would have to get through that, all right? But what, what we're looking for is Price is price respecting the bullish order box? Is price respecting the this demand zone? So we're looking for exhaustion to this uh this this uh, uh bearish momentum, and then a push to the upside. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. Next, Aussie, USD. Curious, Aussies are, uh, are curious uh, situations for me. I think uh, it's not it's not an easy read. All right, that's why you only see Aussie USD on my my watch list this week. You see how price on the daily has found itself. It's a bearish market. Easy to see. Easy to see. It's a bearish market. We've made this uh, bear flag. Price broke. Broke, uh, broke out bearishly on this, this bear flag, came back up to retest. What was support now is resistance and the resistance is holding to this point. We found a, uh, it found a supply zone, a four hour supply zone in there to reject from, right? If we go down to the four hour, we can see this clearly, but I, I also want you to acknowledge that here's the 20, here's the 50, I mean, here's 200, the 50 and the 20, and we are, the price is below all of them, right? Below all of these, so that we can look on the four hour for a more detailed uh, view of price action. All right, we'll be looking for sales here, right? All right, you see how price bounced off of this, all right? And we have found that price, once it we tested this supply zone, created another supply zone, all right? which price came back up to retest and has found uh, 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 that the, the support, uh, the, that the resistance held. Also, you can see along this trend line, all right, the, the, the support line of this uh, bear flag, all right, uh, you can see that price has found, it, found resistance there as well. This is another confluence. Now, understand, Price is making a symmetric, symmetric triangle here, all right? With these, the lows here, then this lower high, then this higher low, you know, now we have another lower high, right? So we, we're making a symmetrical triangle here and we're looking for that breakout. Could the breakout come to the top? It certainly could. And that would invalidate my analysis. Once price starts breaking, 
once price breaks this um, this uh, this supply zone, all right, to the upside. Once we break that supply zone and invalidate this supply zone, it invalidates my my analysis. What I'm looking for is price to continue low. I'm looking for the USD to gain strength against the Aussie, against the other pairs, and bring price lower. We're going to look for exhaustion up here, and then look for price to turn uh, roll over and turn bearish. All right. Next, Aussie yen. I thought I only had one pair on this thing. Oh, I wanted to uh, mention something from last week. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay. Again, another bearish market, right? We broke the 200, came below all of the EMAs, all right? So we can definitely go to the uh, four, four hour and see what's going on, all right? To see uh, uh, more detail, all right? We hit a supply zone, hit it twice, actually three times, one, two, three, right? And price rejected each time, all right? And what was I expecting? I expected price to go lower last week when I gave this uh, this arrow, I gave that reading. I said, I expect price to uh, continue bearishly. Why? Because we broke this low here, all right? Price made lower, low, lower, high, lower, low, lower, high, and then we broke it with a lower, low, right? So that indicates bearishness, but what did we do? We came up, gave an equal, uh, or uh, a near equal high and actually broke it here and, uh, it, it, you know, I was thinking, all right, price is going to make a double top. We can continue lower. It did continue lower, but it didn't follow through. It didn't make a lower low. It actually went up higher. All right. This has a lot to do with the, uh, the weakening of the uh, USD last week. All right. And allowed the Aussie to carry it up. But now things are decidedly uh, in a different different conditions. So what am I looking for now? I don't know why, why that's there. All right, what am I looking for now? We made this higher high, right? But we broke the higher low that made it. That structure, we broke structure to the downside. And I'm looking for price to break uh, this, uh, this lower high, this higher low as well, all right? What, what should happen is, uh, Price may come back up, test, test this supply area here, the supply zone, all right? Test that zone and we'll see if price finds weakness there, or rounds off and rolls over. That's what I'm looking for because it is consistent with the yen gaining strength. All right, Wednesday, this could be different because Aussie has a lot of news coming out, but that's my, my, uh, uh, my analysis as it stands today, looking at the price action right now, all right? So we can get rid of this, all right? I'm still expecting this to happen over here, really, okay? So we, actually, we can leave it. We're gonna see if price breaks this high, if, right, right, if price starts breaking highs, matter of fact, we don't have to wait that long. If price starts breaking highs like this here, all right? We start breaking these highs on the way up. Hey, my, my analysis uh, is uh, invalid. But if we respect this block here, and start coming down, then you know you should be taking shorts. We should be taking nothing but shorts as long as we're under that 200. You understand? Especially if we're under all of the EMAs. I hope you get, I hope you get that. All right, next. USD Swiss, USD Swiss. Now let's go to the uh, daily. All right, and what do we have here? A uh, knot. These EMAs aren't gonna help, all right? Because it's not showing a, a, a a trend. So, you know, there's, there's, there's no point in looking at the, the EMAs in this particular situation. Let's, let's do that. Okay. And what, what we're going to look at is price action. That higher low made that higher high. We broke that higher low on the way down. That means the, the market is turned bearish, right? 
And then we came back, we came back with a, 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 a retracement, a full retracement. All right. We broke that high here. All right. But we're, we're testing the same zone as the higher low. All right. The higher, the, the, this zone held. We came down, turned bearish here, broken, breaking these lows. So we should be looking for shorts, came back up to retest this exact same zone again. All right. And we hit a double top here. Now, what do we do in this case? What are we expecting to do in this case? This is USD. I'm expecting it to gain strength. Tell you what else bolsters that, that, uh, that outlook. I have this dotted line here because these are the highs and we broke that high, all right? That means uh, there's some strength here. Whenever I get a break of the highs, I'm looking for a pullback only all right, a corrective move. And I'm looking for price to show exhaustion here and then continue higher. All right, exhaustion and then an impulse. All right, why, why here? Because there's a four hour order block here, a four hour bullish order block. And uh, that's usually what turns price around. All right, all right. Sometimes when you see price just, uh, and I'm just, you know, this is usually I keep for my, uh, uh, the guys at the Lions Den FX, uh, the mentees there. Uh, if you see price just come down and then turn all, all, all of a sudden and there's no order blocks or there's no supply zone in there, it's because they're replacing missing price. This is missing price here. All of that is missing price. That's a, a fair value gap, a liquidity gap. If it's all uh, buyers here, that's because there's no sellers, you understand? And price usually comes down and corrects that or fills in that gap. It always does. You see how it came down here and then it finally came back up here to, to uh, uh, correct it all of that. See how price came down here, all right? And then it came down and corrected all of that. You understand? Sometimes it comes down immediately. Sometimes it takes a little while. You remember that. Anyway, so that's what I'm looking for here. I'm looking for price to show exhaustion and then to come back around showing strength because I believe the USD will gain strength this week. Okay, next, Euro Swiss, Euro Swiss. This one's quick. Thank goodness. All right. <clears throat> uh, Euro Swiss. Now take a look at this. On the daily, you can see we were very bullish. We broke structure here, all right? And it, we turned the, uh, uh, um, the, the trend to a bearish one, lower lows, lower highs, all the way down, right? And that I'm looking for a continuation of that, all right? I have this, this uh, 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 these arrows on here from last week's uh, analysis. I expected price to go up, find uh, a uh, supply zone and reject from it. And we are doing exactly that, finding that rejection here and forming a new bearish order block, okay? If we go to the, now, and I also want you to acknowledge that we're under the 200, the, the uh, 50 and the 20, okay? Price is under it just barely, but we are still bearish here. Right. If we go to the four hour, look at the stochastic. Stochastic says we have just reached the uh, oversold uh, area, all right? So we should be expecting price to pop, pop up a little bit. I'm thinking that pop up isn't gonna be much. We'll come back maybe to test this, 20, this 200, all right? But I'm looking for a pullback, right? I'm looking for price to find its way back up a little bit and then come back down, all right? Exactly like this arrow is, uh, you know, illustrating, all right? Uh, um, this is a continuation of last week's uh, analysis. So I'm looking for exactly this, okay? And I'm hoping that we break that, that, that low to make a new lower low, all right? As long as we don't break this high, all right, if we break this high, that invalidates my uh, analysis, okay? 
But as long as we are under this high, we are still maintaining the bearish momentum. So that's what we're looking for ourselves, okay? Pound yen, next, pound yen. What do we got on balance, pound yen? Let's go to the daily. All right, looks like we got an uptrend going, right? We're above the 200, all right? But price has gotten below the 50 and the, 200, and the 20, all right? So the trend is not as clearly defined anymore, but we're still above the 200, all right? On the stochastics, it says that we're due for a pull a, a pullback, right? And it looks like we're looks like the, the, stochastics, the stochastics is in accordance with is aligned with the uh, this bearish order block, this this supply zone here at the two at the fifty, okay? And that's what we're looking at now. If we go for a more nuanced uh, uh, reading on this. This is the CAD and this is the yen. I'm expecting that yen to get stronger uh, during this week, but the CAD I'm expecting to get a, a, a weaker as well. So, hmm, why am I expecting the CAD to get weaker? Because I expect US oil to continue weak and the CAD is kind of strong while US, the US oil was kind of a weakening and I expect the CAD to, to kind of fall in line with that this week, right? Uh, this is an interesting uh, situation here because it shows that the CAD is weak here and the yen is strong. And uh, against the CAD, I'm thinking this. I'm looking for exhaustion here and I'm looking for price to pull back only to break the low it creates. We are below this low. That's a sign of weakness, all right? And as long as we are below this low, we have bearish momentum. I'm looking for a pullback only, and then a continuation of that bearish momentum. So that's what I'm looking for on CAD yen. All right, that sounds a little uh, confusing. Uh, maybe the fact that it's it would create a head and shoulders would uh, would help you to see that I'm thinking that uh, price may turn right around this area, which is right where this 200 is going to be passing. So we'll see if we get continued respect of that 200 or no. <laughs> All right, if price breaks this uh, eight hour order block, then that would invalidate my analysis and we'll be looking for buys because we will be above the 200 and the rest of them would cross on up. But uh, that's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that because we broken these lows, you know, I, I would love to get a daily close below these lows. All right, that's what I'd like to see, all right? But uh, if we come back, uh, I'll, I'll be thinking that it's only a pullback setting up for lower lows to come, okay? Next, CAD Swiss. CAD Swiss, another CAD pair, all right? Again, I'm expecting the CAD to be a little weaker this week, all right? So what am I looking at on this CAD Swiss, all right? You see this, this green line here? That is strong, a strong key level. You see how it has both been uh, uh, support and, and resistance, support, resistance, resistance. You understand? Very key level and price came up to that key level and shot down. All right, so what are we expecting now? All right, I, what I like to see, what I, what, something I like to see is this W formation and price coming back to test that neckline. All right, usually on the test of that neckline, things go this way. All right, but I'm not sure if it's that kind of W. We're gonna find out in a second. All right, let's look. Let's look at the EMAs. All right, the 200 price is above that 200, but price is below the 50 and the 20. So we can only look on the daily for our analysis uh, in accordance with these EMAs. All right, all right. If we look with the the uh, stochastics, we are overbought. All right, so we are due for price to pull back. 
okay? How far are we pulling back? Well, again, I expect the CAD to be a weak market this week, all right? We just barely, barely broke that high. So what am I looking at? I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put my stochastics on this to measure the correction, all right? And if I measure the correction, we come down, we can come down and visit this golden ratio at 61.8 on the Fibonacci retracement tool, all right? And C price then come back up this way. But that would be, mean that the CAD is strong against the Swiss. I think it, 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 there's a chance that it might be, but I'm just looking at the price action. We broke this high, we broke this high, we broke this high. This is a strong uh, market. And I would be looking for bullish, bullish uh, uh, continuation of the bullish momentum. I would look for uh, uh, nothing but uh, buys until we get, we start breaking below that 200. That's when I would start looking for sells. That only makes sense according to the price action I see in front of me. All right, the fundamentals might come into play this week. Okay, look for that CAD and look for the, the strength of that CAD. I'm thinking it is going to get weak, but against the Swiss, it the Swiss might just be weaker. You understand? So, but just reading the technicals, all right, breaking these highs, you know, I'm looking for more bullish action. So, any pullback, I'm looking for a weakness, the, uh, the uh, impulse to start the weekend and show exhaustion and then a continuation of the bullish uh, momentum. Next. Oh, now see, wait, I'm not even gonna go into the Aussies here because this, this, is com this can be confusing. This can be confusing, especially against the Swiss, especially against uh, Aussie and the CAD, which one's gonna be weaker, which one's gonna be stronger this week. You know, this is, this is and especially Aussie New Zealand dollar. This you're gonna to have to look at the uh, uh, watch the news around Tuesday and Wednesday, and we'll see how things go there. Maybe I'll give a update, to, you know, a, a a hot list, a Tuesday hot list this week because I think it might be necessary to do. Okay, so that'll conclude this. All right, uh, this this webinar. Hey, I hope I didn't confuse you too much. <laughs> All right, if I did, leave a comment. And, I, uh, and I'll clarify if there's a market that you want looked at, uh, leave, leave it in the comment section and I will take a look at it for you. And um, uh, go ahead and look at, uh, check out either one of the two uh, videos that are on the screen right now and uh, uh, continue to get some more information and, and check out how I, uh, how I look at setups and how I look view the market. And I will see you in the next video.